A couple of uh, days ago, uh, OpenAI uh, destroyed uh, all software development uh, as we know it. Uh, let me explain. <clears throat> you see, uh, some few days ago, OpenAI came out with uh, what they refer to as chat GPT apps. And these are basic apps that can be triggered and hosted directly inside of ChatGPT uh, given some sort of like query. For instance, if you, uh, say, if you ask ChatGPT, uh, what's the best high quality uh, vitamin C I can buy that exists? Then ChatGPT can come up with uh, ah the best is blah 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 and then it hosts a purchase form which allows you to actually purchase directly from uh, one of these ChatGPT apps that needs to be created uh, before of course and that needs to be uh, registered and um, associated with ChatGPT using their ChatGPT SDK to allow for the app to show. And that basically gives you a completely new uh, platform for distribution, both for e-commerce vendors and for, you know, anybody selling anything online, including software. You see, such micro apps, when hosted inside of the LLM, arguably changes the LLM's status and turns it into the operating system. Because traditionally, it is the operating system's job to host apps, right? That is literally the definition of an operating system. And it's been the definition of an operating system all the way back to like the late 60s when we started creating operating systems. So the operating system has one function, and that one function is to allow for serving applications. Now, ChatGPT and OpenAI has that ability themselves and they can serve applications directly from within ChatGPT itself. <clears throat> now, at Ainiro, I actually didn't know this because I was too busy reading news. Uh, I was too busy to read news because I was working on our own app slash widget feature which allows you to use uh, iNero's magic cloud, just write natural English, such as, for instance, create me, contact us uh, widgets with uh, a backend that sends emails to me whenever somebody tells the AI that, you know, they want to talk to a human being. That's like the dead simple thing, and it takes me like literally 10 seconds with magic to create such an AI uh, slash ChatGPT app. But the point is that this completely changes how we think about apps. Similarly to what microservices gave us 20 years ago when people started advocating microservices. You see, the point about the microservice is that it's a small encapsulated piece of logic with great amounts of cohesion that allows you to loosely couple that microservice together through an orchestrator whose primary task, instead of being the app, becomes its ability to orchestrate multiple microservices around. All right, so instead of having one monolithic app, you end up with 50 micro services and this works on the back end of things right but you still have to create your front end fairly monolithically right so now you end up with a code base let's say salesforce for instance i bet you their front end is probably millions of lines of code in total if you consider all the plugins and everything you can do with it it's probably 50 million lines of code or at least 10 million lines of code right <clears throat> Now, instead of thinking about Salesforce as a monolithic app from its graphical user interface perspective, you can actually break down Salesforce into single individual widgets, where each widget becomes a micro app, similarly to how microservices became microservices 20 years ago, 
And that allows you to serve. Instead of serving your entire app, you serve just one of the micro apps, such as if the user talks to the LLM and says, hey man, I wanna create a new contact in my CRM. Then the LLM is gonna come back, cool, here's a widget. Type in name, email, phone, whatever info you have about the person, and I'll save it to your Salesforce account. So now all of a sudden, the create new contact becomes one micro app. And there is no Moonleafy application that's known as Salesforce. Because Salesforce is being orchestrated together using the AI and the LLM, allowing it to decide according to user input what specific micro app it should show at any one particular point in time. Now this solves a whole shitload of problems related to AI. Now, if you go to ChatGPT and you try one of their apps, then purely logically, OpenAI probably has access to, you know, everything that is your app, right? That means all data passes through probably OpenAI, but if you create such micro apps with Magic Cloud, then actually nothing of the data you are neither seeing nor actually typing in to your micro app is ever sent to OpenAI. So this creates an opportunity to deliver AI agents to verticals and segments we previously could not uh, deliver such agents to for privacy reasons. For instance, health sector, right? Imagine an electronic patient journal entirely served through an AI that never exposes private information or sends private information to OpenAI. Well, I just described how uh, micro apps uh, works in Magic Cloud, because that is basically the description of the app. So none of the sensitive data is ever sent to OpenAI. In addition, <clears throat> we have a brilliantly tied together uh, micro app architecture allowing us to focus on one problem from our app at the time and create a GUI encapsulating that particular problem with huge amounts of cohesion allowing us to solve that problem with 1000 lines of code instead of a single monolithic uh, uh, code base consisting of millions of lines of code and that completely changes everything First of all, because of OpenAI's massive distribution being 700 million weekly users. So everybody, and I mean everybody, fucking Salesforce and HubSpot and you know Amazon and Google and every single software vendor on earth is gonna want to basically build such chat GPT apps to have them hosted inside of chat GPT. Simply put, because of distribution, right? Now, the problem with creating such apps is that you need to download OpenAI's SDK. You need to probably understand Python or some other programming language. I don't even know what languages they've, they've done this SDK for. And you need to spend three months creating your ChatGPT app. Let me show you how to create it using Magic in five minutes. And in fact, I've already shown you because this video is accompanied by another video where I actually write into the Magic dashboard natural English and Magic and OpenAI in combination generates and creates new widgets which are basically ChatGPT apps or micro apps or whatever you want to call these guys and the app is 100% functional the functioning backend, the functioning frontend and everything is hosted inside of the AI chatbot. And the reasons why that completely destroys all existing software in the world is because it completely changes the paradigm upon which we build software. So we're no longer building software for operating systems to show the entirety of our monolithic applications at once, but we're actually building 1000 plus micro apps that we are hosting and delivering to the AI on a per need basis. And that basically means that all software on earth needs to be recreated. Have a nice day.